So you've decided to sell your house. Generally when people go to sell a house, the first thing that comes to mind is hiring a realtor. Have you ever wondered how that realtor gets paid, who pays him, and what he actually does for that paycheck? Well, in this video, we're going to discuss all that. We're going to find out how a realtor actually gets paid. So generally we talk about for sale by owners, giving you tips and strategies to help you make more money and to sell your house faster and to teach you how to do it on your own. In this video, I'm just going to give you some information that will help you make decisions. The decision like, do I want to sell my house myself or do I want to hire a real estate agent to do it and pay them? We'll get right to the point. It's actually the seller that pays for all the agents. He pays for both agents. He pays for the agents that list his, list, list his house and he also pays for the buyer's agent, the person that's buying his house. So essentially, the, real, the, the, the seller is paying for the person that's going to sell their house for them. It's going to market it and all that. And they're also paying for the real estate agent that's going to be negotiating against them. Now that, may, that might not make a lot of sense and it really doesn't, but we're going to go over how that came about and why it's the way that it is. I mean, look at it like this. Look at it like say you're, you're going to court for some reason. Either somebody's suing you, you're suing somebody, divorce, traffic ticket, whatever. Um, when you go to court, you hire an attorney that represents you. And your adversary, whether it be someone suing you, the state or whatever, they have their own attorney, attorney that represents them. And so you go to court and you fight it out and the two parties with their separate representation come to an agreement. Well, it's like that in real estate, only you're paying for all of the representation. Now, it used to be back in the day, before the internet, real estate was a lot different. Everybody worked for the seller. It was, it was all the agent's job to get the house sold. And so when you wanted to market a house, when you wanted to list a house, you basically had to have a broker because the, instead of the internet, the broker had these big thick books. And in those books, they, they put all the houses that were for sale. And if you wanted to buy a house, you got a hold of a brokerage and you went and you sat down and you looked through those books looking for houses that you wanted to view. And then an agent, whether the person that listed the house or another agent, they would take you out to, to look at the homes and then you would find one, of course, and you would make, a, make an offer and so forth and so on. Well, everybody, it was, in the, it was in everybody's interest to get the house sold for the seller. So nobody was really working for the buyer. They were just kind of left out there hanging. Nowadays, with, with the internet, it's a lot different because buyers can go online, they can find out all the information that they, that they need, they can see the homes that are for sale, they can find out when the home was last sold, they can find out how much the home is selling for, they can find out how much it sold for the last time it sold. All that information that used to be held close by the real estate industry is now available to the public. So the real estate industry did a big shift. Instead of just marketing and selling your house for you, they turned to a different model and they call it representation. So now, the person's, so now the person selling the house, they have representation. The person that's listing their house for them. And the person that's buying the house, they have representation. And how that works is you actually sign an agreement that says that you're an exclusive listing agency or you're an exclusive buyer's agency. And you have a fiduciary duty to your client. So when you're, when you're a buyer's agent and you have a buyer you negotiate for that buyer and you do everything you can to get a better deal for that buyer. So you're actually negotiating against that seller's agent to try to get your buyer a better deal and also to watch out for your buyer, make sure everything's disclosed on the house and there's nothing wrong with it and all that. But the ironic part is, is that the seller is paying that buyer's agent for that privilege <laughs> to, no to negotiate against them. So let's go over a little bit about what each agent does. So a listing agent, you hire a listing agent to sell your house for you. So what they do is they come over and they meet with you. It takes about 45 minutes to an hour. They go around your house and they show you what you need to do to get your house ready for market. They might go over some staging tips with you. Um, they might go over some cleaning tips with you, some ways to keep your house ready to show. They might take you to take the pictures down off the wall. There's a whole list of things that, that, are, that are helpful to do when you're trying to sell your house to make a better presentation. Now they'll also help you price your house and they'll do that by doing a comparative market analysis or a CMA, which means that they'll, they'll, pull, they'll pull comps from the area. 
houses that are similar to yours that have sold in the last six months and they'll use those comps to help you to come up with a price for your house. And, they'll do, and, and a listing agent will also take care of all the transactional details for you. That means that once you get an offer, they'll, do, they'll take care of all the paperwork for you, which, which ironically, when you, when you hire a real estate broker, there's a ton more paperwork. But they'll take care of all that paperwork for you, contracts, lead-based paint disclosures, everything you need. The real estate agent will take pictures for you. The real estate agent will then help you get to closing. They'll help you through the inspection process, the appraisal process, and everything else associated with that real estate transaction. And then they'll go to closing and then they get paid. A buyer's agent's job is to help a buyer find a house. He has other duties to perform once they find that house, but his main objective at first is to help that buyer find a house. Now, according to the National Association of Realtors, 52% of buyers find their home themselves, the one they end up buying, on the internet. According to that same source, 90% of buyers start their home search on the internet. So that means that people don't actually go out and look for a buyer's agent to buy a house. They go directly to the internet. And unless that buyer's agent is referred by, say, a family member or a friend, then most agents get hooked up with buyers through these internet sites like Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com, and and such. The way that works is that a buyer will go directly to the internet. He'll go to a site like Zillow. He'll put in Zillow.com, comes up, he'll write in the, the, the town in which he lives, in my case it would be Wichita, Kansas, and he goes on there and looks for home. You can put up front like specifically what he wants, three plus bedrooms, a basement, garage, all that. Now he'll go to a house, there's a nice house, click on it, scroll through the pictures, yeah, it looks pretty nice, looks like something I might like to look at, looks at the area, okay, that checks out, and then reads the description. Yeah, that looks like a house that I might like to see. So the next step is to go over here to contact agent. Now you might think that you're contacting the listing agent, the person selling the house, but actually what you're doing is you're contacting an agent that pays to be on Zillow. And what that agent pays for is looking for people like you, for buyers. So you put in your phone number and you click contact agent. So now that agent will call you and then they'll set, they'll set up a showing for you and while they have you, they'll try to get you to sign a buyer's agency agreement. And what that agreement does is it ties you to that agent. It says that if you buy a house, that agent's going to get paid one way or another. Now through a normal real estate transaction where you find a house that's being listed by a, a listing brokerage, that listing brokerage has a contract that says that they're going to pay a certain percentage for selling their house, be it five, six, seven percent, and then they're going to split that with the buyer's brokerage. And that's how the seller ends up paying for both realtors. But what happens if that buyer finds a for sale by owner? Then that agent will call that for sale by owner, schedule a showing, talk to that owner, and try to get them to pay the agent. You see that how that works? Because now if the for sale by owner doesn't want to pay the agent, then the buyer is stuck paying the agent. So that's why both buyers and real estate agents will sometimes try to shy away from for sale by owners. So the trick is, as you'll see in some of the other videos we've posted, is to make sure that your house is dazzling, make sure it's stunning so those buyers just cannot resist. And then when you get them to your house, you kind of talk directly with the buyer and so forth and so on. And we have a whole nother video about negotiating with uh, buyer's agents and buyers when they're looking at for sale by owners. So in conclusion, yes, it's the seller that pays for the real estate agent. The seller pays for all the real estate agents on both sides. Unless you're a for sale by owner and you can negotiate a different arrangement with your buyer. The trick is to try to get the buyer to contact you directly from these sites like Zillow rather than going through an agent. But if they already have an agent and they already have an agreement, we have other videos to teach you how to negotiate for those. So if you found this video helpful, Click the subscribe button below and come back for more tips and strategies when you decide to sell your house yourself. And we also have some links down there that will take you to other places that can teach you more tips and strategies when you're doing a for sale by owner. And there's also a link that if you do get into contract as a for sale by owner where you can find the paperwork, the, the state specific contracts. So thanks for watching and again, come back often and we'll see you in the next video.